Welcome to the space where creators have aligned a positive and intellectual collab of open minds. For sharing and learning from one another, it's a vibe. We give us a podcast on the mic. Subscribe, educators, spitting bars. I guess you didn't know I'm multifaceted and humble, taking off life goals. The classroom is my comfort zone where I plant and sow. Seeds of knowledge, compassion, empathy, and hope. Reading is the key to unlocking your potential. Countless benefits, including positive and mental. Regardless of the genre, books are highly influential. Go get yours, I'll get mine. Make you strive. Money mental. Come rock with me and get down to this new jam. Yeah. Yeah. Between my friends, I had a very simple plan. Educate the masses through books and life lessons. It's a grand slam. I'm out. Sala Falava and welcome to the Reads of Rossa podcast. This is the third season of the show, so it's important to shout out the folks that have stuck with me and supported the podcast since 2021. Subscribers, followers, those who encourage, challenge me and uplift, those who have shared podcast content on their social media platforms, thank you so, so much. I am very grateful. Well, time flies and we've had so many wonderful guests come into the space and share their stories and life experiences. So to kick off the first episode of 2023, we are joined by a hardworking, fabulous, fierce, (laughs) inspirational actress, theater star, choreographer, storyteller, and role model for young Samoans, Basifika woman, and our rainbow community. It is my honor to welcome to the show, Pitmal Petelo Lam. Hello. <laughs> Man, ah, it's so wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much, sis, for coming through. How are you? I am great. I'm great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is all very exciting. <laughs> and yeah. I'm really looking forward to uh, having you share just your craft and some of that work. Fingers crossed you can share some secrets and stuff. About work, of course, not personal secrets. Okay, so. (laughs) So, um, yeah, before we get started, as I said, it's an honor, such an honor to have you here. I like to give guests opportunity just to do a brief intro. Shout out your folks, your people, uh, your Mm -hmm. villagers, represent. Let's go. Represent. (laughs) Um, yeah, Tyler Falava, everyone. My name is Pete Mal. Um, shout out to my mom's village in Saliaula in Savai and my dad's village in Samatau. And yeah, and Tofu City City Girl. That's what's up, fam. If you're if you're watching right now, tell everyone your cousin is on the Reed to Russell podcast. Tell everyone, spread spread the word. <laughs> Shout out to the our fam and to your villagers, sis. That's awesome. Um, say fam, baby. <laughs> so I guess, man, I guess people want to know, like, where, uh, where did it all begin for you? You know, uh, if we think about your creative influences, uh, role models that you looked up to as a young person coming through school, like performing arts, why... The performing arts for you mm. um for me um so i was born and raised in samoa i moved to new zealand when i was 16 mm. it was in 2011 and before that i knew nothing about performing arts i knew nothing about the arts you know because we we they don't teach that at school in samoa so when i moved here and I went to Rutherford College to finish my last year of high school. And that's where I discovered that they have dance and drama and music, the arts mm. in the curriculum, which was so good because for me it resonated, you know, straight away because I was never interested in anything else. I was was not interested in becoming a doctor or whatever, like nothing against them, but that's not where... I was, you know, I was born to be a performer and to be a star, (laughs) (laughs) you know, and I was always that, you know, little fafa in church, dancing everywhere and enjoy the white school. I mean, Sunday school Mm. in my white outfit. Um, But yeah, 
2012 it's when I went to high school here and that's where I discovered arts and then after I graduated I moved to Bipa and for me um, role models I kind of um I wouldn't say I have any like role models from this industry that I you know looked up to I think when I think about what I go back to my foundation my fam which is you know where I come from and where I was born which is my family and my culture and that's where it all started and it all you know begins mm. is yeah and I kind of you know that kind of all the things like you know you have the the youth the white sunday you have the cultural stuff at school and that kind of transcends into how i um perform and how you know i work in this industry mm. were yeah. you always uh encouraged to uh to pursue the dream, you know, this dream of of working in in uh, the performing arts industry of telling stories through action, through your voice, through choreography. You know, mm -hmm. is it something that was encouraged? Uh, you mentioned at the beginning, you know, you weren't really interested in becoming a doctor or doing, you know, studying those yeah. more like traditional uh, career pathways that most parents would want you to. You know, well, no, I, I, you know, growing up, I was, you know, my family was, my parents was very, you know, you have to study to become a lawyer, like the normal, to become a lawyer, a doctor, those, those kind of jobs. But it was never, I never, I didn't have any motivation or anything to pursue that. So I didn't, and so I didn't have any. No one, because like I said before, perform, performing arts wasn't a thing back mm. in Samoa growing up. So, no, nah, not really. No mm. one encouraged me to do it until I came here and found it myself. And mm. just my family just came along with it and support me. Oh. You're so courageous. <laughs> uh, I say that because, you know, to just kind of like follow your passion and your dream, like you're courageous and I think you're very strong, um, you know, because it's not always easy to to do something different. Obviously, in nowadays, you know, nowadays it's more, you know, performing arts is, I think we celebrate our culture and art so well uh, and our, you know, the different types of stories that are coming out of our communities. So to be doing that at that time, at that age, um, how did Bipa change your life? If it did, if it did at all. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because after high school, um, I had plans to go to Unitech um, because I was majoring in dance at that time, you know, and dance was like really my passion. I re I love dancing. And then my dance teacher came up to me. He's like, have you heard of Pippa? I was like, no, I had, what's mm. Pippa? And she gave me a pamphlet and she said, you should go and have a look when they have their, you know, open day, go ahead, check it out. I think you might like it. And so I went to the open day and I just auditioned. And I got in, and I'm so glad I did because Bipa is, I'm like, it's, it's amazing because I had this conversation with someone else earlier today about Bipa. It's such a shame the school is gone, but um, Bipa has everything, you know, it's very, it's, yes, it's an institute. You come there to learn and da 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 about performing arts and everything but the thing that I really love it was um it was aina, a family you know and you can't find I don't know if you can find in any other institute that your tutors or your you know your teachers will call you in the morning 
when you're late to check <laughs> why you're not there and to see if you're okay if you need a ride they'll come and pick you up you know like the the, the other things those kind of things that mm. really makes this school what it was you know and I'm so glad and because you have so many professionals and people Pacifica people um that are well known in the industry that were mm. working with us into bringing us and getting us ready for the world. Mm. For so, it was did great. you know? Did you know at that time, like when you went there, that there were just so many other young people like yourself who were just super passionate about performing, you know, dancing, being actors and actresses and mm. storytelling. Did you know that before, Pipa? Uh, no. Yeah. No, nah, not at all. I went in there not knowing anything about, you know, the school. I was, I remember I was so nervous. I didn't know who was going to be there. And, but it was, because that was the other thing. It was just a, it was a massive cultural shock when I moved here, and so to go there, it was that feeling of I felt, I felt at home. I felt accepted. I felt like that's where I was meant to be. Mm. And in all the other brown faces, not even brown faces, they were like you know, it was all different ethnicity there. It was all accepted in this building, which was so beautiful. Mm. Of course, it was. You know the Pacific Institute of Performing Arts, but you know we are those people. <laughs> you want it? Let's talk about your, um, you know, your television screen acting debut. Let's talk about Tenesa. You got to work with Samoan Kiwi director uh, Mario Falmui. Man, uh, tell us about that. Uh, we'll talk about some other projects that you've been a part of but how awesome was that to get that screen acting debut um well <laughs> <laughs> um you know i was so nervous and i didn't know because you know I, i've just been doing theater and mm. going into that space for me was a whole different um thing for me and it was great because it was a great challenge for me because I I'm not the person that wants to be stuck in one place or one thing mm. I'd like to explore other things and see um where I can go with with that and it was good working with Mario my dear friend Mario on a professional level as well because it was the, learning how to switch off that hat and be in a space where yeah I was just I don't know what it is but I, to, to be honest it was the, the cameras for me and the people mm -hmm. around theater you do your own thing on stage and you just muck around and you go and, but here yeah, it's a whole different setting you're just like okay everyone is looking at me now mm. and I'm being directed by Mario <laughs> in front of everyone and <laughs> um, it, it was great it was great meeting other people as well um, that have been doing this for a very long time and uh, yeah. <laughs> Did you, you know at first were you a fangirl? I mean, I imagine these days you're like way too professional to be fangirling, <laughs> really. But I mean, you know, when you think back to those initial days, you know, like those initial projects, were you, you know, being part of an ensemble cast? Would you kind of look and go, "Oh, I've seen that person or I've heard about, you know, and try yeah. real hard to like not fangirl, but really just fangirl hard. <laughs> yeah. I had to, I had to like, you know, <laughs> breathe and hold back all my fangirling because, you know, <laughs> with Frankie Adams and, right. you know, <laughs> and I just went, okay, this is not the time to be fangirling. Let's just deliver the work and, 
we'll do that later. But <laughs> it's great because in that time, you know, when we have breaks and stuff, we got to know each other and we got to, and we're all just the same normal people together. You know, it was mm. great. It was great fun and cold. <laughs> <laughs> You're part of the Auckland Theatre Company. No, I do. I, you were part of. You were doing work with them, or I was doing work with mm. Auckland Company. And but... what what was that like for you? Like, if you think is that does that represent mainstream New Zealand Kiwi creatives, or it just wasn't really kind of like it was an experience for you, and you've you've decided to move and do other things? No, oh, yeah, it's 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 both. I think mm. you know. Because you go into those spaces and um, it's it's different from how us brown Basfika run our theatre. So when mm. you go into a theatre company, it was you know a place that's run by Balangis, and you know, and you work with these Balangi, and there is a space there that we share, you know. Our, how we run things and how they run things and we, we 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 find the middle ground and that's how we you know work together mm. and magic happen because and I think that's that's what it is it's just mm. the right people with the right mentality mm. mindset all in one place you know it doesn't matter you know, we and I think it's the, the mainstream is more open now and you know diverse. So, I, mm. yeah. You know, when you think about uh, those who have graduated from Pipa over the years, uh, in your year when you finished up there, are they the creatives who are now? Uh, I don't want to say running the scene, but telling the stories in our communities are, uh, you know, creating projects or have some of them moved overseas to pursue uh, opportunities in the performing arts? What's your view on that? Yeah. Um, yes. Um, some of us that have graduated have moved on and do their own thing. Um, some have, you know, changed their career path. Mm. But it is that thing. Yes, we are – We we like we are taking over but at the same time we're moving together with mm. generation above us you know and i remember at beepa some uh, one of the tutors told me that our generation us we we must and we have to be better than their generation mm. so it's a thing going in coming out of that and going into this new journey it's remembering that yes we learned that and it, we don't have to stay the same. We have to find other ways and better and refine the craft mm. and find new ways to bring and elevate um, our stories in this industry. Mm. Do you, are you in a place in your career? If I, you know, um, if I can refer to it, you know, uh, thinking about the projects and uh, your successes, are you in a place where you can choose the roles that you play without being stereotyped as you must play this role? Does that make yeah. sense? Oh, yeah, of course. You know, I get – I now I get, I get auditions about mm. roles and I, I can – I am in that place where I can say, no, I don't, um, thank you, but mm. my soul doesn't sit right with this right. role, or I don't want, it. this doesn't serve anything to me, or, yeah. Mm. Uh, but so far, I've just been saying yes to things, because <laughs> I am that person, I, yeah. I just say yes, and I go for things, because you just never know, you know, it's mm. all out of, you know getting to where I, I want to be, you know, in this industry. So, so far, I think I've only said no to like two or three things, mm. but everything else, I'm like, yes, I'll do that. Yes, I'll do that. Not just even like 
performing on screen or on stage, but backstage as well and oh. behind the scenes because I love working behind the scenes as well, you know, learning all those things. Mm. So, yeah. You know, I want to talk about Wild Dogs Under My Skirt. Uh, you were in the original cast uh, of that show, but you you worked with Annabella, uh, award-winning director. You've had the opportunity to learn from her. Uh, I mean, as she as her being a mentor, uh, man, <laughs> what what? Tell us about this experience, if at all possible describe mm. it um so wild dogs when it came up in 2016 mm. i was still at FIFA at that time right I was year. and um annabella had asked me if i wanted to come in as a stage manager mm. and so and i said yes like I said, it was like, yes, I want to be a stage manager. And so I went in and did that whole show in 2016. And after that, 17, 18, that's when they took the show down to Wellington. Mm -hmm. And Annabella was like, would you like to audition for this role? Oh, <laughs> like, oh sure. <laughs> of course. And so I auditioned for the role and, they, you know, she gave it to me and yeah that has been my role since then um in wild dogs wow yeah uh thinking about some of the the cast that you've been able to work with you know it's an all-female ensemble production uh that examines and celebrates you know what it is like to be a Samoan woman so thinking about some of your fellow co-stars like uh, man like Tell us about that. Like, what is it like to be part of that it's family? It's great because you have all these women that mm. comes from different walks of life. You know, you have mothers as well. You know, we have women in there that have kids. And to see and watch them um, juggle everything like being a mother and you know and coming into rehearsal being it's so great because I've learned so much from them and and I love because we all we are all the same when we come into the space and we all know mm -hmm. we treat each other with the same respect there is no you know I am older than you or like you know I am more experienced or whatever we all are on the same level and mm -hmm. that's a beautiful thing because we're able to um create this beautiful work about Pacifica woman written by a beautiful Pacifica woman mm. and take it to the world and nationally and and I think that I think that's the important thing creating work is you know people see what's presented to them but it's the work that's happening behind it and mm. relationship that we had to create and you know it's the important things because that's when that's when everything comes together and that's how we you know prepare and put on a good show mm. you know uh i think you know when we think about any uh body of work or just any job a career you know it's not just about the the happy moments and the good stuff uh what have been some challenging uh learning experiences uh for you as a young woman a young Samoan uh you know working on these different uh projects challenges um getting over this fear and shutting off this voice that always tells me that I'm not good enough for this role. I'm not good mm. enough for the show. And I'm like, you know, it's learning how to shut that off and knowing where I come from and everything that I've gone through yeah it's, it's it's not and also 
the challenge is keeping the relationship with other people. Mm. Um, you know, that thing, you give the vibe, even though, like, there are moments where you just want to kick in with someone. <laughs> you just, just, like, say, so, so, may I say. <laughs> but you just. <laughs> You're just like, <laughs> almost like. Almost, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Almost like. You just had to breathe. I just had to breathe and, you know, remind myself that, you know, I I am still making my way up in, in this industry, still making my way through and reminding myself that this, this is all part of learning, you know. Mm. Like what you said, it's not all rainbows and everything. Mm. There are moments like this and you, you it's things that you, you, just go, you just go in and then move on, you know, yeah. and and I, I have people, um, I have a really good support system and people that have worked in this industry that I can go and talk to and share share with and give me advice to overcome all those obstacles and those things, you know. Mm. But, yeah. <laughs> have you ever uh, considered moving overseas uh, or, uh, you know, to pursue opportunities uh, or is it that you're like, as you've just mentioned, you know, you're still learning, you're still growing, you're still um, there are opportunities there in New Zealand yeah. for you. No, yeah, I had not think about moving anywhere mm. at the moment. Right now, I am quite happy with where I am because there's still there are opportunities, you know. And I, when I think about, it, I am so grateful and blessed because I have not you know I have not run out of any jobs since I Mm. left I've just been getting jobs like big or small it's enough it was enough for me to live and you know right now it's coming out of COVID and it's you know works are still coming and I'm super grateful for that so at the moment nah I'm quite happy. Maybe, maybe in the future, yes. But right now, everything is great in New Zealand. And, you know, just coming back from a trip in um, America, it's, that made me appreciate what we have here and appreciate the life, you know, how things are in New Zealand. Because, oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> how was your trip? How was your trip? I loved following your updates i was like sis say sasa <laughs> but i mean it was it just they looked are, like it was a blast <laughs> <laughs> how was the trip like you were connecting with family and was that your first time in in the states no my first time was 2020 when we went to new york when we oh that's right for the show yes to new york in 2020 and that was just we came back just before the lockdown happened and this mm. was my second time it was great, you know, uh, apart from like all the politics and everything. It's, it's so beautiful. The people that, you know, I've met there and I I did not come across anyone that was like rude or bad vibes. Mm. You, know, you have the, <laughs> you have the, you know, all navaliers and druggies <laughs> on. Uh, it's past it. But it was such a beautiful experience that I'm so grateful for. And Whoa. man, that's so cool. I'm know that I was meant to get I oh, man. I tell people like, man, stop telling the story, Lossa. You didn't even go. Oi, if and everything was paid, we we're meant to go in April 2020, Easter. There was like a big uh, Catholic schools conference. I was mm. one of the people going from school. We, Nick Minute, our school got shut down and then we couldn't go <laughs> because they, they closed the borders and everything. I was like, oh, yeah. oh is, yeah, still you know? <laughs> is it still nah. happening though in the future? No, nah. yeah. nah. uh, <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> something else will come up. Google, Google Earth, Google Search. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, yeah, oh, man, yeah, your trip looks solid as a, and of course, family, eh? Just yeah. family time is yeah. super, super uh, precious. Of course, and yeah, I'm so grateful because, yeah, 
and see what I mean about the relationship and the arts mm. because because that's how I met Stacy, my friend that I went to. right. Oh, um, her um Bubba in 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 Memphis. That's oh. how I met her was through Wild Dogs, and in that time we built that relationship and trust um with each other, and yeah, we were able to go there not as you know. Only mate, but as sisters and oh, that's what's up. That is so yeah. so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I yeah. want to talk about uh, just a little bit about identity, uh, you know, culture and like representation. Like for you having a voice at the decision making table, uh, what does that look like being a young? I don't even want to say up and coming because your wealth of experience um, from in front of the camera and behind the camera. I mean, you've had so many different experiences and projects that you've worked with, um, worked on. So, you know, being a young uh, Samoan woman, being an advocate for our Pacifica rainbow community. Tell us about what that that means for you and the work that you're doing. Mm. As a performer, as a, you know, someone with a voice. <laughs> yeah. It, it's great because um, I never think, you know, it's it's funny because I never, when I go into these spaces or when I get audition, I never, I never let my, um, what do you call it? I never let my gender mm. or define my career or define what I do or what I'm capable of. Mm. Um, and it's great. It was This weekend was a great reminder of, you know, representation as well, because I went to a workshop um, last weekend, just a Sunday and working with the, the community and you have the, you know, the young ones coming up to me. It's like, oh my gosh, I really love your work. Mm. Um, love following you. Um, fangirling, big fan. And for me, for me, you know, I, I go back and I go, okay. Because I was thinking about our interview and I was so nervous. It's like, oh my gosh, I hate to, because interviews make me so like, oh my gosh, I don't want to talk about myself mm. or uh, what I do or talk, you know mm. but that was a great reminder for me that there are you know that I, I guess I am sick of myself <laughs> but there's a generation and you know of the rainbow community mm. that needs to hear me that needs to see me so they can see themselves and what they can do, you know, what we can do and the magic that we can create mm. on screen and on stage and off, you know, yeah. that we're capable of doing all that. And I don't, yeah, and I'm so glad that I think everything that I got, not only, yes, maybe some because of my gender, but everything else, I think it's because of my work ethic and what what I bring and what i what I can do, you know, mm. and I never, like I said, I never let my my gender define what I do. Mm. <laughs> or, I love that you say that. Hardworking, yeah. fierce, but inspirational role model, mentor for maybe other young uh, young people, uh, young people who are really just trying to find where they fit to have a voice and tell stories. And I, when yeah. I was researching. Because, you know, we don't play around here. We do the research. Yeah, I, I, was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, girl. You really did her research. Well, I mean, but that's what really got me is like, and I love that you've just said it again. You know, my gen your gender does not define you. And you see it in the roles, the way that you really take on each role that you play. I'm like, sis, you better stop it right now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really... You know, it's captivating, uh, but it's just, it's awesome. Like, I just think, go, sis, keep doing that because 
it is it is having a voice for you know our young folks who really need a strong voice to speak for them but always remind like you say it doesn't define me like you're gonna throw yourself into a role you are going to kick butt and smash goals it doesn't it shouldn't hold you back yeah it should you know i've had my time with you know and that was the other thing is you know Mm. as well you know about challenges you know it's it was it was a challenge to get over that for me Mm. get Mm. over that um that whole that, you know and healing all those things that you know people that have constantly told mm. me about myself and how I, I was learning how to to get over it and heal those part and use all those things as a fuel as a fuel to you know for my work and how I I do things because mm. People will always have something to say. Oh, know. yeah. But you know what, girl? They're there and we're here. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know what? That's what I love your vibe. Eh? Like, I've watched other interviews. I've read articles. <laughs> I've read magazine online articles. Um, yes. And I'm just like, this is this is what you want. Like, this is what you have to do. Like, um you know, normalize these conversations, normalize not mm-hmm. being defined. And that's why I asked before, being stereotyped, like, yeah. you know, have there been situations? And I'm sure, like you've mentioned, you have stories to tell. But I also think uh, really why I wanted to bring you on here is to is to let people know that, yes, as you mentioned, there have been challenges, there have been judgments. But you know what? Girl, you yeah. are going for it, yeah, right? You Regardless, just, you are just continuing to to evolve uh, and grow in your craft. So yeah. that 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 we needs must. to be celebrated. Yeah, we 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 must we must evolve and we must um, find a way to move forward and not let mm. anything else stop us. You know, that is the only way to move forward. <laughs> And yes. Thing. Yeah. yes, yes, that's say it louder. Um, I want to talk about Pet Mile, the performer, the actress, <laughs> the star, the uh, who we see on the stage. Uh, what is it like for you to see your family uh, at some shows or maybe a show? Like, how does that and your play, you know, the characters that you take on and breathe life into tell us about that feeling of seeing mm. family or really you know friends your loved ones yeah. come along to support you um yes so <laughs> my family mm. has never seen any of the work that i've done because mm. they're based in samoa I'm ah. own, yeah so my family they're all based in samoa and my mom mm. got a sister in australia so all my work that i've done None of them have seen it, but, you know, whenever I'm on stage or whenever I'm getting ready for things, I'm all, I'm always calling my mom or calling my oh. sisters. I'm like, hi, guys, I'm going to go on stage. <laughs> so, like, I'm doing this. And mm. they're so happy. And that, that, for me, is enough to go into a process. And, you know, because who doesn't want their family to be there and... Mm you know to support and see what you do um but yeah it's i don't know i'm <laughs> i mean i i i'm sure you have a group of uh close friends and loved ones there that you consider family oh, yeah. uh, that that you know that come to support you and i think you know uh nothing wrong with having your second family there i think you know your family supports you through prayers and through the cause and, and things like that. I think it's, you know, um, totally. I've got my friends. Yeah. yeah. I've got my friends and everyone from high school, my teachers mm. from high school, they're always checking up and they're always asking when is my next performance. Mm. They want to come and support and they come, you know, and I love it because, you know, I go to, and it's the same thing. We all go and watch each other's shows. Mm. 
they were all from the same industry and from the mm. same that's important to support and uplift one another and this, yeah. we, we too many uh too much time is wasted on you know yeah. hating on what people are doing but nothing beats you know like just going along uh just to show love and support like that's super super important yeah we must stay together we mm. must stay united and support each other because girl we have no time <laughs> mm, time is precious you know uh do you have any routines uh special things that you have to do to prepare for a role uh you know like i gotta go away to be in nature to you know like that kind yeah. of thing oh yeah um you know when i for me is everything is mentally mm. physically spiritually and yes when i I've changed my mentality, <laughs> my okay. you know, <laughs> come up with like, you know, some ritual, my own, like, okay. I like to, you know, when I know I'm preparing for a role now, I need to start training. I need mm. to eat healthy. I need to, you know, drink a lot of water <laughs> <laughs> and go on, you know, walks and talks <laughs> and things with my friends. And also, you know, preparing for a show. I like to go to things early, like an hour, two hour early. Yeah. I'm I'm that girl. <laughs> that Me likes too. To I hate being late, show. man. <laughs> I hate. You know, I'm just like, mm, let's break this out in time thing. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I like to be early to things, and yeah, it's just it's like normal things, and I like to sit by myself like take a few minutes before a show and just have my own time and pray and you know all those kind of things it all plays into to this <laughs> do you do yoga or pilates or anything extreme I like do, that i do yoga not pilates yet <laughs> we were moving on to that this year. <laughs> But yes, I do yoga. I love yoga. Mm. And during the lockdown in 2020, that's what I was doing like yoga with Adrian. There's this girl on YouTube. <laughs> I love her yoga. Um, Annabella, like, you know, introduced her to me. And I was like, oh, yeah. do yoga, <laughs> get flexy for those, for those movements, for the. <laughs> I love it. Yes, that's what's up. Um, yeah. You go. Um, you know, um, I want to talk about the Savage Colonizer. I, I don't know how much you can say, but I know it's your current project. Um, okay, I hope I didn't have my dates wrong. But tell us about uh, how you got involved in this project and, and how did you get the part? Obviously, you auditioned, um, but I imagine there must have been so many other talented folks like yourself trying hmm. to get the roles yes um so uh savage colonizer i got a call to come do the workshop last mm. year because we did a couple of workshops last year for the show that's how it started mm. was to, you know they called me to come in to to read and to workshop the script the poems and after that i got another email to come for the second workshop <laughs> so from there i think that was my audition <laughs> it's oh. like you're on board and we're doing it and there are some new performers that are coming on on mm. board which is you know so exciting i don't want to say it but yes. don't 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 give away please don't don't tell us any secrets you might get in trouble after this when this drops <laughs> save, uh, save the secrets but that's exciting that's yeah. cool and right now we are um we are workshopping the show right now we started last week and this week oh. because we go into rehearsals in february yeah. Mm. You know, this the savage colonizer. This is, you know, we must talk about this because this is another gem, uh, another mm -hmm. book written by Tusiata Avia. Uh, did you read her work prior to getting a part on the show? Because Wild Dogs Under My Skirt was another show. You know, it you were also involved in that. Uh, but it's a, it was, you know, another it's a poetry collection yeah. by the same author. I mean how familiar are you with her work before being part of this project? I 
you know, before Wild Dogs, I didn't know anything about to see mm. this work, you know. Um, uh, what is it? It going into this process is different. We got the book. Mm. We did a. What did we do? Oh, we did an a, a, a audio recording for RNZ. I think it was two years ago. Mm. That's when we all got the Savage Colonizer book from Tusieta as a gift to the Wild Dogs cast. Wow. <laughs> and she gave us all the book. And I remember going away and, and during the lockdown and I was reading her book and I remember crying because some of the poems in there, Savage Colonizer is quite different from mm. Wild Dogs because Wild Dogs is more of Tusieta and mm. her journey as an Afakasi woman, you know, right. Samoa and in New Zealand, but Savage is more, you know, political and, you know, all about colonization. But yes, I remember crying and I was thinking, oh my gosh. The reason why it was because I, I, I think about it and I get hurt and get a, a angry because there's nothing I can do right now to repair the damage that's already been made, you know, mm. by, you know some white people that wanted to come and colonize mm. our, our people, you know. But this is great that, you know, you have someone like Tusieta that is not afraid, that has so much courage to bring all of that into, you know, into light. And then you come in and bring it to life. So, mm. yeah. Oh, you know, you mentioned um, you mentioned that you like to do uh, work behind the cameras, behind the scenes. So, what other things do you enjoy about uh, the performing arts industry when you're not being the actress that you are, uh, killing it in front of the camera or in front of the audience? What aspects of behind the scenes do you enjoy doing, or do you want to? Uh, perhaps learn about you know like production or editing or maybe you know um i quite enjoy being a stage manager <laughs> i love stage managing and like running around doing things i, I don't know i just you know in, in the film I, I would really want to get into directing some um film stuff also as well as you know directing some stuff on stage and writing some things you know and I'm getting into my writing mm. you know trying to get into that because why not mm. um, I have some work that I want to do and I want to be able to collect all the tools and things that I need to you know action all of that so yeah directing writing everything everything that I can you know, that I can get my hands on and can learn off because why not? <laughs> yes, and you know what, I I, I had to ask because I was wondering, you know, have you done some writing and I cannot wait to, uh, whenever that may be, I cannot wait to meet Petma, the writer, the author, the uh, because you know you do you are a storyteller through your actions, through you know dance, uh, through actors and actresses, you know through the characters that you portray. Uh, but writing is also another deeper way to connect mm -hmm. uh, with the audience. So I cannot wait uh, when and you know that happens. I look forward to putting you on blast <laughs> <laughs> yeah um you know i've applied for funding mm. um twice my first time i got rejected <laughs> mm. and then my second time i got accepted because yes there are there is a, a, a you know a work of my own that i want to workshop and develop this year and you know the next few years and yeah, I've I, yeah, 
I've I'm starting something. We're here for that. We are so here for that. Audience, fam, people who are listening in, people who are watching, you better watch out. Pitma's coming, man. She is coming. So follow her, follow her. Uh, check the bio. I will have links to past work that she's done. I will have links to articles where that uh, she has been interviewed. I will also have links to her social media. Please follow her. Check out the wonderful work that she is doing. You will not be disappointed. I love uh, putting guests on blast because, you know, when you come on here and you're really sharing something that has a lot of meaning for you, something that you're super passionate about, like why wouldn't we want to celebrate and uplift that, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, if you're listening, if you're watching, follow Petma on social media and, um, <laughs> yeah, just just you will not be disappointed. I promise you that. Um, I had a question about, you know, we live in the stand age of social media. Do yeah. you feel any pressure, you know, as a young woman, do you feel pressure about that in terms of like you must behave a certain way on social media? Uh, you can't talk about some things. Mm -hmm. Do those do they cons those issues or does it worry you or concern you? Mm, uh, not really. I, I share everything and anything mm. on my social media mm. and I share anything that resonates with me and mm. that you know, um, helps um, or needs to be heard. Uh, yeah. So, nah. Mm. I'm a very, you know. You're an open if, book. I'm an open book. I can... You're Share whatever, and my life is boring. So, really. oi, stop <laughs> it! <laughs> you just see me uh, sharing memes, and <laughs> um, so you've you've mentioned you love doing yoga, uh, you love uh, preparing for a role, but you know, going to the gym and exercising. I mean, I think we've all seen your posts. Not gonna lie, <laughs> uh, just working it in the gym and, and doing that amazing looking after your health how else do you look after yourself like what other things do you like to do to disconnect from uh you know you finish the project like how do you uh treat yourself after or or is it just catching up on sleep is that something mm. that you enjoy doing oh yes um there's some time meditation is uh, one of the big things for me meditation and just going away from turning off all my social media, mm. like deactivating everything, just shut off from the world. And I like to be by myself and I tell, and I will let my friends know and people that, you know, I'll be like, you know, this is my time. I need to breathe and I need to calm down from, you know, from a role or a project. Um, Meditation is my big thing. I love to meditate and go for walks and mm. read a nice book, <laughs> you know, read a good book that a nice romantic book. <laughs> Oy, nothing wrong with the romantic books, you know, we all go through that phase. <laughs> I like, to, yeah, yeah. And like maybe like, you know, just have a little wine with mm. my classmates or my good friends and just talk. That's the other thing. I like to talk about the process as well after because mm. to let it all out so I'm not carrying anything, you know, which is, is such a good thing to do. Well, for me, it's good for my mental and everything just to talk it out and let all the frustration that happened during the process and everything mm. is like, this is the person I wanted to stab over here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> you know Just gotta get it out. Get it out. Get it out. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's it's just yeah, normal things. That's mm. the thing. I disconnect from all my social media mm. and yeah. Meditate you... and just breathe. Mm. I just sleep, catch up on sleep and just yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good for your health. You know, yeah. um, 
I wanted to, you mentioned books, you like to read. Um, do you have a book recommendation or something that you've listened to recently that you would like to uh, mention or even a childhood book or something mm. you remember from school that kind of inspired you? Um, recently, I, I read The Alchemist. I really mm. like that book. Oh, that's one of my favorite books because... I just love, I read that book like three times, mm. <laughs> you know, The Alchemist. I love that there's a quote in there that I really liked that really mm. resonated, which is, um, where is my book? I wrote it down. There is only one thing that makes a dream impossible to achieve is the fear of failure. Mm. And when we strive to become better, better than we are, Everything around us becomes better too. That is one mm. of the things that I really like. You know what? Yes. Because I think um, for me growing up, it was always that thing I can't fail. <laughs> to my mm. parents, you cannot fail. You cannot make mistakes. We, you know, mistakes was considered like, oh no. But that's where the learning comes from, you know. That's what I've learned. That's where the learning comes from is all those failures and just stay in your lane, do your own thing, mm. manifest what you want, you know, grab the people that, you know, have the same mindset, the same mentality, um, the same drive with you and go forth, you know. That's one of the things that I like. About that I like that. And I love that. About goals and aspirations and everything, and mm. it's all you know, we sometimes look out and trying to find what we want and what we need out there, but actually, it's all we have it. Um, we mm. are our universe, and we have the power, and we have what we need to go forth. We just need to find it, you know, mm. go through goals and things to find it, but we will get there. <laughs> I love that. You know, um, what are you, I I like to usually talk about, you know, achievements. And I know that earlier on, um, you know, when you were starting out, you did, you were, you know, you've received an award, you've, you've, you've mentioned you've gotten funding. And I mean, again, that, that doesn't define you. It gives you opportunities. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, I want to acknowledge your achievements and successes, but I want to ask for you, what are you most proud of when you think of yourself? Now, I know that's a bit of a hard question because uh, many guests that have come on, they're very, I always say inspirational. Mm. I always say, man, the reason I bring you on is I admire the work you're doing same for you today but it's always hard for them to kind of give themselves flowers and be like oh you know I did this so if you can think of anything what are you most proud of um yeah hmm. I think for me well so many things so 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 many things you know mm. But I think the main thing for me, what I'm proud of is coming here and finding this and staying in it mm -hmm. and not giving up, you know, because it is, you know, we all know, you know, this industry is not all, you know, it's not all that, but mm -hmm. it's, it's what we do. It's the, it's the things, the stories that we tell is how we're bringing our people together and all of that stuff. So for me, I think the great achievement for me is being able to stay because I've had moments where I was like, I don't know if I can do this, you know, <laughs> like, as you know, I, I was like, Oof, I don't know if I can do this, if this is financially mm. um going to help me in the long journey but then you have the moments where you're like you do a show or you you come across someone that you know 
like I said, that admires your work or what you do and things that you do. And that's enough for me to motivate me and go, okay, I have a bigger purpose. You know, the money will come. I just need to do what I do better and keep going and everything else will come to me. So, mm. yes, I was da 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 whatever, but I think that's the thing. It's being able to stay and keep going and mm. not right now because it's not time to give up. <laughs> if anything, this is the time to stay and continue because mm. the people need it right now more than ever. Mm. And while we go through this whole <laughs> mm. perseverance, perseverance, yeah. perseverance, and, perseverance, and all of that. <laughs> yeah. You know, what can we uh, just for our audience and listeners? What can we expect from uh, from you uh, the share? You've already shared some things. You're working on some future dreams. You know, the writing and that aspect of your craft. Uh, but what should we be looking out for? Uh, from Pitmal this year. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. It's funny. I did an interview like a couple of weeks ago. Oh, last month, really. Mm. And I was asked that question too. And oh, really? <laughs> like, I I don't know. My twenty twenty three is like my year of just going with the flow. Mm-hmm. And see where it takes me because I have, other than, you know, my own thing that I want to um, develop and all the works that, you know, in place already. But I don't know. Just expect the unexpected. <laughs> there you have it, folks. Expect, expect the it. unexpected. Expect. I love that. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Somewhere, somewhere, I'll pop somewhere, up and in some way, she's just gonna yeah. pop up and surprise I, us. <laughs> uh, that's the thing. I don't know what I'm gonna get myself into this year, but that's um, not knowing what I'm gonna do. So you know, man, I yeah, I, I, I fan girl over here. I just you know we're at the part of the show where um. You know, we're going to wrap up. I, uh, before I hand it back to you to drop more words of wisdom and more life gems, um, I really, honestly, sis, thank you so much uh, for coming through. Um, I know that we had this was we were we were going to do this last year, um, but you know, life things happen, and I am so grateful that you were still keen. Uh, to come through today uh, in 2023 and, course, and, and share just, you know, just a part of your um, journey, you know, uh, life challenges, life experiences and learning curves. I, I have no doubt that uh, those who are tuning in, watching or listening uh, can really take a lot of value away from the stories that you've shared. Um, I'm excited to to follow to continue to follow your journey and just to see what's to come uh Mm. you know like i said it's about uplifting this platform is it's important because i just want people to know that there it's you're not just one dimensional you know you uh you bring so many things to the table as an artist, as a creative, uh, as a storyteller. And sometimes we don't get to see that. So it was super important for me to be like, sis, you need to come on the show. I, I, I know there is more to you stories than, <laughs> than meets the eye. Like that, and that's, a, that's, you know, I will forever, um, you know, put the guests on blast because if I'm inspired, no doubt there are others um, and especially our young folks who are oh, yeah. perhaps looking for direction and some guidance and uh, role models and mentoring. So I just want to say, keep um, aspiring to be uh, the best that you can be. You know, there is no limit to to what uh, you don't need me to give you this talk because you know oh, this. Oh, yeah. You know, um, keep keep dreaming and and uh, keep telling those stories through dance and through acting and 
behind the scenes. So I love what you're doing. Um, I see you. We see you. So uh, wishing you lots of love and blessings uh, as you, you know, embark on the, uh, you know, the journey this year uh, and surprise us with projects and things that you're going to be involved in. Oh, so I just want to hand it back over to you, sis, and just, you know, just to wrap up the show, uh, final words. Final words. Um, oh, another great book to read. Is, oh, there have, we go. Have you, have you um, read um, Viola Davis? finding me oh yes i listened to the audiobook it was so like in my fatu stabbed me right here i just love it's so like real i was just like girl <sighs> what i really loved about that book is like she went all that through all of that she kept going <laughs> this is like i know she's so resilient hey like yeah Anyways, that was another book that just came. Oh, out. We're, you wait, we're we're putting that up there. We're putting that up there. <laughs> um. Anyways, last few words. Um. Do what you love to do. Um. Do it with good intentions. Um. Do it with love. Um. Take care of the people that are in your life right now. Um, you know, don't get too attached to things. I don't know. For me, I like to, there's, you know, different things. There's a different season in your life. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's time to let go of those things for new things to come. And, yeah. And keep, just stay together and look after each other. It's so important. I think it's so important right now for all of us to stand together um, as people and mm. just love. Mm. I don't know. I, my thing is love. Be kind and just love, love, love. Love conquers all. And that's it. Yes. And that's, yeah. That's, that's me. It's all <laughs> alofa from this uh, mangiri. Two seven five, mangiri. Wait, is it two seven five or two seven four? I don't want to be giving the right. Yeah, ngali. Two seven five. Yeah, two seven five to the Oti. Big up to uh, all our, our Mangele listeners and followers and, and all that out there. Much love. 